a uh, little get together huddle. They just broke the huddle and now they're going to the center circle. Everybody's getting in positions. Matthew, are you ready for this game? It's I, I personally believe it's going to be an equal game. Yeah, this should be a really tight game. You know, looking at the numbers for these two teams last year, two teams that didn't score a ton of goals. Um, Appalachian State scored just 23 goals in 18 games last year. Pittsburgh scored 24, but also two teams who are pretty solid at the back. Appalachian State also only conceded 23 goals, so they broke even on goal differential as we get underway here with Pitt in possession. Pitt's now working on the left wing. As they keep driving it down the left wing, I'm trying to get a number. I can't see it. The ball has flipped it into the defense of Appalachian State. Appalachian State defender's already there, and they're working out of the back half. Actually, I believe they called offside there. It looks like didn't quite time the run correctly. Got a step ahead. Mm -hmm. Appalachian State kicking on the back as it goes back to the goalkeeper of Carrie Eagleston. She's dribbling out to her le or right side, excuse me. And the 12 of Kirsten Seeley is passing it to number 13, Lindsey Brantley, as Pitt is putting on pressure immediately as Appalachian State is now advancing to midfield. Yeah, a little bit of a high press there from Pitt uh, after the free kick, but a good job by the Mountaineers to break through that and get it into Pitt's half. Now the pass back to Carey again as Appalachian State's using three in the back, so you're going to get a wide defense where the teams are going to put in their two backs onto the wings as the ball is being advanced in the midfield. And now at Pittsburgh has recovered up their tackle, and they're in right now. Carey comes out of her goalkeeper, and she clears it, collision. The ball will go out for a throw-in. And the referee calls for a Appalachian State goal kick. Yeah, good job by Eagleston coming off the line there. That could have been trouble if Pitt had gotten to that through ball first. And I believe they're actually going to give a free kick to the Mountaineers. Going to say the, the Pitt attacker fouled Eagleston as she rushed out to make that clearance. Leah Piez was in the attacking motion there, just right at the edge of the box, bang, bang, play. But this is why Carey was selected in the all Sun Belt goalkeeping team because she comes off her line and saves her team a goal. And that's a bad giveaway right there in the back by Appalachian State, and here comes Pitt. And the shot is deflected right into Carey Eagleson, and she picks it up really easy. Really no power behind that shot at all, Matthew. Yeah, good defending there by the Mountaineers to get back, force the attacker out wide, kind of – had to take that shot off of her back foot. Wasn't able to really get enough pace behind it to trouble Eagleston. Appalachian State pretty pretty calmly right here. They're play. They're moving back, playing side to side. Back to Carey again. I think we're going to see a lot of that from Appalachian State as Carey is going to be distributing the ball shortly to her center backs. Yeah, and if you look at Pitt, it actually looks like they may have gone with four at the back here instead of three like we thought pregame. But you know, right now they look to be very very organized, playing very compactly. Might be tough for Appalachian State to break down that back line and, and get any sort of attacking chances here. Pitt is playing in their back line as the goalkeeper just kicks it right out to center circle. Two app oh, offsides called by the line judge. But that was very good defensive play there as three Appalachian defenders collapsed quickly on the center circle where the ball was kicked out. Yeah, both these teams look like they're going to try and control possession as much as they can and get back behind the ball when they lose possession and try and make things difficult for the opposition's attack. Pittsburgh is advancing it into Appalachian half as Appalachian is taking the ball back, and the defense is still, like I said earlier, working it side to side. Now they got the ball up to center circle. And again, Pitt not quite as aggressive with the press this time, but, it's, but once App gets the ball out towards the center circle, they are all over the ball trying to win possession back as goes out for a throw in there. Caitlin Little uh, running down the right or left flank, excuse me, and was looking for the ball there. From number 13, Lindley Brantley, as they have a throw in. And Appalachian State is into the Pittsburgh defense as the ball goes out. Not enough pace there from Holly Beaver as she couldn't keep the ball in play. So goal kick for Caitlin Robinson of the Pittsburgh Panthers. So far, pretty good defensive battle. Yeah. No really slip-ups. And if there has been any, there's been great recovery from both sides of the yeah, team. Yeah, we've seen some good back-and-forth play in midfield so far. And, yeah, both teams have... You know, haven't really had bon – nobody's had a bona fide chance yet, but a couple of half chances for each side. But as you said, each team doing a really good job. If they do get broken down defensively, good job of recovering quickly and shutting things down as quickly as they can. Amanda West is fouled. Now, that's going to be a name you're going to hear a lot. Amanda West was the all-time or has 
tied the all-time scoring list for Pittsburgh last year as the sophomore has now got the ball on the left wing, bringing it down into the Appalachian State defensive line. She looks in the edge of the box, and then she's looking, looking still. Cross comes in, deflected, and it's going to be a corner for Pittsburgh. So the first corner of the game from the player that I think will have the biggest impact. Yeah. It might as, be the best player of the game. As you said, Amanda West. West, that's going to be a name that we're going to be saying all afternoon. As you said, tied Pitt's single-season record for goals. Uh, was an all-ACC selection. She scored or assisted on nearly 80% of Pitt's goals last year, so she is certainly a focal point of that Panther attack. Amanda West is sitting from the corner. Her hand goes up. She brings the cross in, edge of the box. Unmarked was, I believe, that was... Was it Amanda West? I'm trying to see. Oh, and there's a collision, but the goalkeeper, Carrie Eagleson, saves it and saves kind of a sloppy defensive corner from Appalachian State. Yeah, some half-hearted appeals for a penalty there by Pitt. I believe that was Pace that was brought down in the box uh, by one of the Appalachian defenders as Eagleston rushed out to claim that ball, but the ref says play on. Eagleston bombs into the midfield. Really interesting that nobody was going back, but now Appalachian State on the attack here as we see the ball go towards the half line, given up again by Appalachian State, and they win the ball back in the midfield. The pass is given up to Izzy Wood, a freshman. I think we have to hit on that, that both teams have a lot of young talent. We have a lot. I think Appalachian State has five freshmen playing. Excuse me. Yeah. No, no, that's right. Five freshmen playing. And I believe Pittsburgh, if you can help me out here. Pittsburgh, I know they only have one senior on the roster. Same thing at Appalachian State as well. Yeah, and Appalachian State, they're really going to have to figure out who their new sources of attack are going to be. They lost both their leading goal scorer and their leader in assists from last season to graduation. So it'll be interesting to see over the course of this game who's able to step up for the Mountaineers and, and provide some creativity up front. Kirsten Seeley bombs it down to Caitlin Little. She controls it on the left flank. She puts it back, and now she passes back to number 13 of Lindley Brantley. As she passes it to the side for Kirsten Seeley. And a good job by here by the Mountaineers controlling possession a little bit. That ball is going to be a little bit too far in front of the attackers, though. Haley Davidson on the Pittsburgh defense, clearing the ball. The best she plays it back to Robinson. Now she's playing it down the right wing to Anna Rico. As Rico plays it back to Robinson, a little back and forth here. More, kind of like the modern football that you see in your Premier League where we're playing out of the back. They're not bombing balls into the midfield, just working out the back and trying to make sure that the opposition is not having the ball. Yeah, there's kind of two distinct styles at least at the professional level now you know a lot of teams still like as you said play it out of the back try and play more possession based there'll be other teams that still try and sit back in a low block defensively and beat you on the counter attack but it looks like both of these teams are going to be trying to play possession play through the midfield and make things happen creatively instead of just relying on a blitz of pace on a counter attack the ball is headed on to the Appalachia State defense as once again, Amanda West really bringing the, ball full, uh, bringing the ball forward for the Panthers so far as they get a throw in. And as we said up uh, towards the top of the broadcast, with Appalachian State only playing three defenders in the back and West playing out wide, there, there will be some space out there for her to exploit throughout the game. So the Mountaineers are really going to have to zero in on her and make sure she doesn't get too much open space. Ball in the midfield is tarried up now, and the pass is deflected as that was Holly Beaver trying to look for, I believe that is Izzy Wood, as they're both trying to get into the Pittsburgh final third. Free kick awarded for Appalachian State. <laughs> Referees pointing, saying you got to take the ball a little bit back, don't advance it too far. Another thing that you see in a lot of professional play is trying to move the ball forward from yep. where the foul is. And it Lauren, looks like Lauren Murphy is going to send a cross in for a set piece. Oh, that's a great ball. Great yeah. ball. I agree with that. Uh, I'm trying to figure out who that is. Olivia Cohen. That's who that was. That was unmarked free of the post just the header. One of those things where it's a deer in the headlight situation where you don't think you're ever going to get a chance like that, and sometimes it goes right past you. Yeah, and, it, and a header on a long ball like that can be tough to control and aim and direct exactly the way you want it to. I mean, you see you know, some of the best players in the world mess that up sometimes. But definitely a well-worked free kick there by the Mountaineers. And we saw Jordan Grigsby, or Grigsby, excuse me, head that wall back into the final third of Pittsburgh 
as now we see the Pittsburgh advance the ball on the left wing, Appalachian State, really controlling the field here as they have four people or three people shadowing the areas of where Pittsburgh has possession. But as I say that, Pittsburgh is moving the ball with the ease right now. And just looking at the way Pitt is kind of setting up when they have possession, it looks like they're being a little bit more aggressive with their fullbacks pushing up the field. At times when they've got the ball in the Mountaineer half, the only players back on their side of the field are their two are two of the center backs. I guess with running three at the back, they don't have true fullbacks, but they are being more aggressive with those wingers. Haley Davidson's been really involved. We've been talking about how Adam or Amanda West has been the key offensive player, but right now my eyes are looking at Haley Davidson as she is just being a complete rock playing that. Almost you would assume it would be a right back role, but it's like, almost like they're playing with wing backs with Amanda and then their left back. I'm trying to get a name on that real fast. But it's like they're moving up with the attack and they're joining attack as the two center backs stay back. Yeah, and, and a lot of runs overlapping wingers. We've already seen West cut in centrally a few times. Um, you know, they're, as we've said a couple of times already, they're just going to be looking to get her the ball in open space as much as they can. Then he Brantley with a throw in to Holly Beaver. Holly Beaver's whoa, pass to Izzy Wood is intercepted by Mackenzie Edwards. And now we have another Appalachian State throw in. And a good job there by the Mountaineers pressing up a little bit on Pitt as I tried to play that out of the back. Good job to win back possession, although they do give it right back right here. As Pittsburgh is now advancing it down the, their left side. Amanda West looking for the through ball and she will be called offsides. That was really bang, bang. I really thought she had that for a second. Did you? Yeah, great run by West, you know, and an excellent ball. Uh, can't quite tell who played that ball in, but it was a great ball, great run by West. It's just, you know, it only takes being a half second early or a half step early, and you're offside. But great job by Pitt, by Pitt there, and a great idea. And they're really pressing hard. As we talk about the two styles of football, I was going to jump in and say that pressing has become a real big thing popular as Carey had to just get rid of that ball quickly because there was so much pressure. Around four people in the box all chasing you down. You had to make a quick decision. And if she doesn't make the right one, it's going to lead to a goal. Yeah, so and as you said, pressing is another thing that is just huge in the game today. You know, some of the best teams in the world, like Liverpool, really employ that strategy to try and, you know, they're just trying to win the ball back in advantageous areas in the attacking third. As Haley Davidson is going to take the corner for Pittsburgh. The second quarter of the game, Appalachian State has not had a corner yet, but they've had a set piece, which we talked about earlier, almost had a goal. Davidson yeah. steps back here. And that first corner by Appal that Pitt had, Appalachian State, a little bit sloppy on their defending, so we'll see what happens here. Crosses in near post, and it's parried out by Kerry Eagleston as number 17, Athley Palomo gets the ball back, and it's a cross in for Davidson again. Easy cleanup for Kerry Eagleson as she just holds onto the ball to let her defenders get out wide. And another good job there by Eagleson. One of the most important things as a goalkeeper is to really command control of that penalty area, and we've already seen that a couple of times with her being aggressive and willing to come off her line. Now we see AZ Wood trying to control the ball. She passes it off to Tess Kearney. As she hits the oh. crossbar, now they're appealing for goal, and it looks like it's going to be Appalachian State corner. What a strike by, I believe that was Kearney yeah, that Kearney, hit that. Yeah. Off the crossbar, couldn't tell whether it went in off the bottom of the bar, but mm -hmm. excellent that strike was, That from was a strike. The I was looking at my paper to make sure I'm getting these names right, but I just look up and I hear a bunch of commotion, and that almost was a goal-scoring opportunity for App State as the corner cross comes in. Of Peter over everybody's head. That's played in by, I believe that was Caitlin Little. As uh, Pittsburgh has the throw in. I think it's very interesting that the people that are assisting the game on the sidelines, they did this in the MLS that are wearing gloves and they're sanitizing everything. So making sure that if anybody does have COVID, if the test was um, a false positive or a negative, and they didn't catch it that nobody uh, gets COVID. Yeah, and especially being on a college campus, which you know we've seen across the country can be a hot spot in some places. You know, they definitely want to be careful. As here comes Pitt with a nice ball in. 
carry off her line, has to clear it out. And it looks like it could be a counter uh, opportunity for Appalachian State as Easy Wood gets the ball and she keeps going. And the flag goes up, a free kick edge of the box. Brilliant skill from Izzy Wood to bring it onto her right foot and chop it to her left. And that's how she earns the free kick because she advanced on her defender. And they're going to see if it's on the edge of the box or not. And what a great job by Eagleston there. Pitt had that through ball in to pace. Again, came off her line and then a great clearance to get it down to the other end of the field and set up that chance for the Mountaineers. Eagleson played a little bit of a sweeper keeper as she came out like that. And once you come out like that, you have to commit. So I want to see how that's going to play on for Appalachian State. That's a risk that you know they're going to be worth taking because if she goes out and she messes up, it's going to be a goal-scoring opportunity for Pittsburgh. And it looks like it's actually just going to be a throw for the Mountaineers. Gisa Solo is throwing in a long throw into the edge of the box over the head of the defender's into the arms of Catherine Robinson as she tells everybody to slow it down, get out wide, and let's distribute this ball out quickly. Well, not quickly. is She has to wait for the, her defense to set up. Now she's pushing up the field into the most central circle here. Yeah, some good end-to-end -end action here the last couple of minutes. Looks like, well, for a second there, it looked like Pitt just wanted to slow it down a little bit, then they send it all the way back down the field. As Kirsten Seeley kicked the ball to the center circle, now... On the ball is Anna Bout as she is still trying to find a teammate to get out wide. And again, the Mountaineers pressing up a little bit here, forcing Pitt to play backwards back to their own goalkeeper. Yep, Kate McKay made that pass number 19 for Pittsburgh. As the ball is going to be out for a Pittsburgh throw-in. I believe that's Anna Rico. As she's going to throw it in from the center circle halfway mark line. Appalachia State is quick to defend it, but now Pittsburgh, oh, a little bit more skill, but Pittsburgh is looking to attack here. I think they're going to really rely on those long balls because Amanda West can just get through the defense with ease. As she yeah, ends. we've already West has already shown her ability to make those good runs, and none of them have resulted in a true goal-scoring opportunity yet, but definitely she has caused some, some nervous moments for that Mountaineer back line already. Throw in for Appalachian State, and they're calling a foul against. I'm trying to see who that is. But it's going to be a free kick for Pittsburgh. And I'm thinking that's Tess Kearney that just gave away the foul there. Yeah, and it looks like Pitt's going to play this free kick pretty similar to the one we saw from the Mountaineers a few minutes ago. It looks like they'll just send a long ball into the box and try and get a free header. You better watch out for Anna Rico. She could probably peel off the back, and that's what she's doing. The ball is near the keeper, near post, and it's headed away from Appalachian State. Now it's cleared away by Izzy Wood. A very important thing you got to make sure that your team can do is, even if they're attackers, to clear the ball out of danger because now Izzy Wood has cleared the danger. She's going back up front, so if there's a counterattack possibility, she can be yeah. ready to pounce on that. And a little bit of a miscommunication there for the Mountaineers. Eagleston was originally coming off her line to try and claim that herself, but worked out anyway. The Mountaineers were able to clear the danger, at least momentarily, although Pitts still got possession deep in the Mountaineer half of the field. Haley Davidson's going to take this free kick. Almost on the corner flag here, we see Appalachian State having players in the box on the line to clear if a header does go uh, far post. So let's see what Haley decides to do with this cross. As you have a lot of commotion at the PK line here. The cross is in near post, and it's cleared out by Appalachian State. I believe that is – oh, can't see Looks it. Looks like that may have been Kate Grigsby. McKay, I think Kate McKay was the one that sent the ball in, but really easy cleanup for Kerry Eagleston again. Yeah. And a good job by Grigsby getting over to the sideline to pressure Pitt and force them to give it away and get the ball back to Eagleston. Kerry's looking for some teammates as everyone is in the center circle as she throws the ball down a little bit, bring it up a little bit. Now she's going to boot it. It's off the head of a Pittsburgh midfielder, and the ball is badly cleared, but Davidson's there to clean it up, and she brings her team possession as she brings it from the center, passes it to the wide man. And now there's a through ball, but it looks like the foot got caught in the turf. It was raining here earlier in Boone today, and as we're speaking and you're seeing on television that the clouds have not gone away, so that could play a factor into this game if there is rain. And on that ball in particular, it may have also been a communication issue. It looks like 
Um, that was Emily Yapel coming to receive that pass. Looks like, looks like she may have wanted it played to her feet, but they played the through ball instead, and that just made her a step slow getting to it and allowed the Mountaineers to recover. Kate McKay giving it to Anna Rico as she's heavily pressed on by Lena Brantley. And you can see that Holly Beaver is also pressing with Brantley. Yeah, Appalachian State really starting to press here as the game's gone along, trying to make things difficult for Pitt as there's going to be a foul call here that's going to go against App. And once again, Haley Davidson being the facilitator role on that right back, right wing back role where she is coming up, creating the set pieces, and she's really getting Pittsburgh out of trouble because she is so quick on flicking the ball to her either foot and she's passing it to the nearest teammate that is open. As of we see Kate McKay on this free kick. And it looks like similar setup, potentially a, a long ball towards the edge of the box. Although now they'll play it short. Haley Davidson's on the end of this ball. She's looking to cross it in. Nobody in the box for Pittsburgh. Not a lot of air underneath that ball. And Appalachia State could be on the counterattack here. Now it's a three-on-three. Three. Well, now it's a four-on-three as number 15, Chloe Minas gets back. And now Pittsburgh is on the attack in the center yeah. circle. Great and recovery great there by ball. Minas. Carrie Eagleston comes out of her line and clears it out. Once again, if Carrie is going to come out of her box, she's got to fully commit. And once again, she does that and saves Appalachian State from scoring danger. Yeah, on one end of the field, great recovery by Minas to shut down a potential counterattack for Appalachian State. And then a great job by Pitt getting the ball right back up for a potential chance of their own. But again, Eagleston doing a great job of coming off her line and clearing the danger. I think that on that cross, uh, Chloe Minas of 15 wanted that, but Davidson made the run and it was just a smarter play. As the interplay here for Pittsburgh is working really well, and now there's a foul. It looks like number 17, a Tess Kearney might – oh, she will get carded. So that's the first card of the day going to Tess Kearney as she's been all over the place for Appalachian State. And the challenge itself, definitely a foul, but it looked like you know the yellow card may have come, um, may have been a little bit of a kick there towards the end, and that's likely what got Kearney the, into the book. Now Kate McKay is looking over this set piece. I would say about 35 yards out, there's four Women in the wall. Now there's three as number 17, Tess Kearney, who was just carded, is watching Haley Davidson. The cross is in, and it's flicked on, and it is scored. What a beautiful set piece there from Kate McKay. And we're trying to see who just scored that goal. That was a beautiful set piece. Yeah, yeah beautiful, beautifully worked by Pitt. Great job with their movement in the box, really confusing that Appalachian State defense. Really nothing Eagleston could do about that chance. I mean, that was just a fantastic header into the corner. Yep, Eagleson planted like a tree. She just sitting there looking and hoping that it goes over the bar, but it does not. As now number 29 of Caitlin Little is being substituted for number five of Emma McGam McGam McGibbony. Excuse me, McGibbony. So yes, Appalachian State will kick off from the center circle. Yeah, it'll be inter interesting to see here how the Mountaineers re react with a deficit here midway through the first half, we'll see do they keep, you know, playing the way they've been playing all game, which, you know, has worked in in phases of this game, or will you know are they more aggressive now that they're down a goal? Appalachian State, when they've had counterattacking possibilities, they've always been one pass short. As another mistake, as Amanda West has played it on to number twelve and about and about is. Bring it into the box, but now it's ran out, and it's going to be a, I believe that's a corner for Pittsburgh. The referee, I couldn't see his gesture there, and it's looking like, yep, it's going to be a Pittsburgh corner. Great recovery there by Brantley to get back, force the attacker out wide and negate that chance, although still some danger here with the corner. There it is again. She's been all over the place. Haley Davidson on another corner for the Pittsburgh. Let's see what happens here. As they're already up one nothing, and another set piece could be dangerous for Appalachian State. As the cross comes in, center of the box is headed again, but it's headed off target. And it may roll out for, and it looks like that should be a foul right there as the referee is calling for a free kick. He's, no card shown, just saying, hey, let's calm it down there. Because that was a really, she was running full speed. 
and the Appalachian State defender did the right thing. I'm not going to say that she flopped, but, you know, just let her come, yep. absorb the contact, get a free kick, and let Eagleston do her job out the back. And the defending on the corners has been a lot better from Appalachian State since that first one. Um, obviously gave up the goal on the set piece just a couple of minutes ago, but they have looked better on the corner kicks. Number five of Emma McGibbony as she just won themselves another free kick for Appalachian State. We see that number 12 of Kirsten Seely over this free over the free kick for Appalachian State as she passes it to Jordan Grigsby. Appalachian State running out of their center half as Grigsby plays a pass into the middle just just off of Holly Beaver. Or excuse me, Izzy Wood. Yeah, good idea there by the Mountaineers. Um, good ball in, just a little bit too high, and they couldn't control it up top. And if I'm Appalachian State, I'm not going to hang my head on that header. It was just a perfect play. I wouldn't say that what they've been doing is wrong. It's just they've had to have their chances stringed together. And as they yeah. win the ball back in the defense of Pittsburgh, out wide was the pass from Lauren Murphy. Appalachian State's got four in the box. The cross has been deflected out by Mackenzie Edwards. The ball still being hung up as Pittsburgh win the ball back. And Kearney just a step slow getting that ball out of her feet. Looks like looked like it may have taken a little bit of a bobble on her, but that allowed Pitt to get back and recover and keep her from either getting a shot on goal or centering it. And it's looking like it's going to be a Appalachian State throw-in as Jordan Grigsby is going to look like she's going to do what she's been doing for the earlier stages of the game where she's thrown the ball into the box and seeing if that could create a distraction. It could be a error to a goal. As number six of Holly Beaver can't bring it down, and it's going to be a Pittsburgh throw-in. Or a kick, excuse me, goal kick, excuse me. Yeah, and another well-executed play there by App State. Great throw by Grigsby. Did a great job of picking out Beaver in the box. It's just didn't have a great first touch. and Couldn't control it, and it goes out for that goal kick. Izzy Wood is now being replaced by the 21 of Mary Perkins. As we said, Appalachian State, a freshman team, the two forwards up front are freshmen. Yeah, and Perkins, one of the few upperclassmen on this Mountaineer roster. The goal kick is in the center circle, and it goes over the defense of Appalachian State. Now Appalachian State has to clear it out as the ball is going down to the right wing. And once again, good job by Appalachian State dealing with that long ball. They've done a pretty good job of dealing with those throughout the day. Pittsburgh's tried those through balls several times. They've done a good job forcing some offsides calls and also on the ones that do get through, getting back and recovering nicely. And Kirsten Seeley using that little turn to her advantage as the ball is rolling away from her, not trying to control it, making her defender approach her faster. She absorbs the foul as they did a couple possessions ago. And now Eagleson gets a chance to boot this ball into the midfield for Appalachian State. The ball is headed back towards Appalachian State as number 12, once again, Kirsten Seeley has cleared it out for a Pittsburgh throw-in as Haley Davidson throws the ball in. Once again, Kirsten def heads it away. And number 11 of Olivia Cohen just boots the ball a little too quick. They're trying to do a counterattack, trying to catch Pittsburgh off guard. But if you're going to play counterattack, you got to make sure that you're making the pass so that these forwards can take the ball into the scoring. Yeah, and Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh, when they're not in possession, they've been very compact in midfield. They don't want the Mountaineers trying to play the ball through the middle. They want the Mountaineers to have to beat them with those long balls. And App's gotten a couple of decent chances off of those long balls. As Brantley has the foul on Anna Rico. And now the ball has fallen into the place for Anna Rico. Defender goes down. She's still on her feet. Eagleston is still in her goal, standing strong as Appalachian State clears and defends it well. Now the counterattack could be on. Number six, once again, Holly Beaver takes a heavy touch. Referee says, nope, keep playing. And the ball is now booted out to the left wing where Appalachian State defender reads it and intercepts it beautifully. And once again, another good recovery by the Mountaineers there on a long ball that initially looked like it could have been trouble. It looked like Rico could have potentially been in one-on-one -on -one against 
Eagleston, but an excellent job by that Mountaineer back line getting back and snuffing out the chance. Amanda West was on the foul as Appalachian State will take it out their own half. Eagleston looking for someone to get open. as She's got some space on the left wing, and I think she sees that, but it's quickly sniffed out. And now it's into the midfield where Appalachian State has really failed to make their chances count as their defense has recovered greatly. But you, like I said earlier, you have to make sure that if you're going to play this fast counter football, that you have to have the passes there to make it work. As Appalachian State is now pressing even more as they won the ball back in the midfield now, Lauren Murphy holds the ball up in just a great defensive effort there because Appalachian State was a turn from being right on goal. Yeah, one of the best runs of possession in Pittsburgh's half that the Mountaineers have had so far in this game. But Perkins just couldn't quite control the first touch the way she wanted to and another good recovery by the Pittsburgh defense. Appalachian State is Emma McGibbony. Works the ball back to Lindsay or Lindley Brantley, who plays it back to Kirsten Seeley. As now Seeley plays it back to Eagleston, as and Eagleston bombed it out to the right side, and a miss header from both teams. As will go out for a Pittsburgh throw-in, and Pitt's starting to press up a little bit more now. Really got after the defenders and got after Eagleston there on that last little run of play. And, and if if you're going to press, you got to make sure that A, you have the energy for it, and B, you got to be committed. You can't have two people that are pressing. Everybody's got to press to make it fully effective. But like I said, if they do press, they got to have the stamina to make it go throughout the whole half as we have 15 minutes left in the half. Yeah, and especially over the course of an entire game, teams that press a lot, fatigue can be an issue. Now we are starting to see both teams utilize their substitutions a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as we get deeper into this game. Emily Yapel is going to make way for Dixon Viltry. And Appalachian State is taking off number, let me see that, number six of Holly Beaver and replacing it with Haley Boyles, another young player, a sophomore at Appalachian State. As Pittsburgh has to throw in, they're throwing into the wing. And it quickly, uh, quickly snuffed out by Appalachian State as another Pittsburgh throw in. And again, Pitt with some pressure with Appalachian State on the ball in their own third. And a good job by them to force the ball out of play and get possession back. And we see Appalachian State as a new sub on is pressing hard. And I believe that is Haley Boyles who's immediately coming in, pressing, bringing the high energy. If you're going to get subbed in, you got to show your coach what you're made of, and you have to press, play with high energy as the ball goes out for a Pittsburgh throw-in again. So that's three straight throw-ins for Pittsburgh. So they're really working the ball and making Appalachian State defend their possessions extremely well as the ball goes all the way back to Caitlin Robinson. And as you said just a second ago, Boyles has come in and has – Really been running hard at that Pittsburgh defense, pressing as hard, pressing as much as she can. She's listed on the roster as a midfielder, but it looks like she's going to be playing up top for right now, trying to inject a little bit of energy into this Mountaineer team. Haley Davidson moves the ball back to number 19 of Kate McKay. Now as Robinson and the goalkeeper will play it back out to McKay. Davidson comes in as well. Appalachian State pressing two defender or two attackers, excuse me making Pittsburgh make a bad call and a bad pass, excuse me, as offsides is called. But that's the thing to Appalachian State. If you're Appalachian State, that possession that just happened where they're bombing the ball without really giving the connecting passes and they they went to offsides, that's something that Appalachian State needs to keep doing if they want to get back into this game and yeah, suppress and this, those attacks. And this Appalachian State back line has done a very good job of being organized throughout most of this game especially, as I've said, with those long balls. Um, you know, we've had several offsides call go against the Panthers so far here in the first half. So a good job by the Mountaineers staying organized in the back and really making it difficult for Pitt to play those through balls. Grigsby bombs the ball forward to the Appalachian State and is slowly working the way into the box. Is number 13, as you saw on the bottom of your screen, Brantley wide open as she calls for the ball, but the pass is not going to be there as Davidson intercepts it, and now Pittsburgh's on the counter 
as she plays the ball forward as number 12 of Kirsten Seeley comes in really hard, and the referee lets it go. Is it going to be a clear out for number 13? I believe that was Brantley again. And now triple sub for the Panthers. We saw Christina Rattel come in, and we see number eight of Leah Perez coming off. Yeah, it looks like uh, Bout, Rico, and Pace coming off. Adelie Palmo Panthers. comes off as well. I think she's a goal scorer. Or actually, it was Leah Piez who was the goal scorer. As everybody on the team is giving her high fives and big applause as she scored the goal to put Pittsburgh up by one. As Appalachian State defense has a mistake. Amanda West cannot capitalize on that mistake as Appalachian State is now bombing it out just to remove the danger. Yeah, and a little bit of sloppy defending there from the Mountaineers, but once again, good recovery to get that ball back out to midfield. And there's going to be a foul called as Lindley Brantley trips up a Pittsburgh player. I didn't see, Did you see who that was? Uh, who she tripped up? No, but she is going to go into the book here with a yellow card. So that's the second yellow card of the game, both on Appalachian State. Lindley Brantley and Tess Carney have been booked, and I believe the rain is starting to come down in Boone, North Carolina. I said earlier the radar did look like it wasn't going to rain, but now it is coming down slightly. And we'll see if Pitt, do they try those? Those overlapping runs that got him the goal the first time. It's a time. free kick. Oh, and it's just, just whiffed there as Palamo. She had a great, great set piece there. She just slid the ball in and just couldn't get her attacker to slot it home as the rain is now really coming down. And number 19 for Appalachian State is coming in. And another well-worked set piece there by Pittsburgh, good ball in, just half a step too far in front. Lauren Murphy makes way for Megan Craig, or Greg, excuse me, as now the rain in the high country is coming down. There's about 10 minutes left in the half as Pittsburgh is sniffing out another attack as they're in the Appalachian defense. And now the ball is is cleared out, and it's, I wonder if they're appealing for handball. As the cross came in, it came off on Appalachian State's defender, and now they're going to get a free kick. Yeah, I didn't see what exactly the call was there. The cross definitely did take a deflection, so you know, too far away for us to really be able to see closely. But crosses in, it's headed onto the near post, and the ball cannot be finished as it takes a bad, bad shot on a one-time near post on Appalachian State as. Eagleston did not even have a chance as she just sat there and hoped that the ball would go over as it did. And with the rain now coming down, this may make things more difficult for attackers. Ball may start take start to take some weird bobbles. It'll be harder for them to control their first touch. But I so think we'll it's important to note that Appalachian State, even though it is rainy and the conditions are not suitable if you're from a more southern or a western team where it's dry. Appalachia State last year undefeated at home. Yeah, great home record for them last year, but winless on the road. So really a tale of two teams last year. So, you know, they're down early, you know, they're down late in the first half here, but certainly not out of it yet. As number 27 of Hannah Kleich brings the ball to the midfield as the ball is lost and it's in Appalachian State's possession now. As Tess Carney, who's on a yellow, is working the ball around the right side. As the ball, as she tries to play a pass wide out to Leany Brantley, but the pass is intercepted. Not let a little loft in that. She was to get the ball up and over to the defender. Appalachia State would probably still have possession. Yeah, and again, that could be something that the rain is having an impact with, making it harder to get clean contact on the ball, so it may... You know, we may see the attacking play get a little bit sloppier here. Appalachian State in their own defense looking for a throw-in as they're quickly met with four Pittsburgh defenders as Pittsburgh heads it on, but it's to an Appalachian State player as the defense wins the ball back. And once again, Appalachian State trying to do the counterattack football, but it's just not working 
as the press and just Pittsburgh wanting it more. Yeah, Pitt running at the Mountaineers with a lot of energy here. They've This high press that they've been running has been really effective here so far in the first half, and the Mountaineers really not able to play much in possession. They've had to resort to a lot of those long balls, which just have not worked very much. The ball is back to Robinson as she's making her mind up as the ball is going to be worked on the left side. Appalachian State has three bodies around, two bodies now. And there's comes a press again as they're going to make the ball out quick as Davidson gets the ball. Now she's looking to send the ball off to number 20. I don't know if she is not. She's going to play it right back to Robinson. Probably smarter that she played it back than to the number 27 of Hannah Kleich. And now the Mountaineers come in with a press of their own and an excellent job there by the Panthers to break through that and get the ball out to midfield. Pittsburgh, a little dribble move as she's advancing on the left wing. And looking to see if the referee is going to call offsides, but he will not. As Pittsburgh had a clear-cut opportunity, I think that their player was thinking that we have offsides, so I'm not going to touch the ball. Yeah, it looks like that may have been it may have been West who pulled back. Can't tell who exactly it was that pulled back on the run, but that player may have been in offside in an offside position, which may have, you know, confused the other players, led to a little bit of a miscommunication there. Appalachian State with a throw in down the left side, quickly met by two. Count it three Pittsburgh midfielders as they're playing the ball out wide. There's a wide open attacker for Pittsburgh. Had her arm up. Davidson looking to play a ball in, and it's cleared out by Appalachian State. Good but header not there. out just yet as they still remain in possession. Oh, well, Appalachian State has now won the ball and booted it forward to clear the danger. Good initial header there by Grigsby on that ball into the box and then a good job by the rest of the back line in midfield to win that ball back and get it back down into the Panther end. McKay bombs it up to Kinley, or Brantley, excuse me, Brantley is there to intercept it. So Appalachian State, I, I wonder if they're going to change their formation a little bit Maybe put another person in the midfield, take a one attacker away, maybe so they have somebody, some outlet passes to look to, as now Pittsburgh is on the counter, and the pass is wide. I think she passed that one because she knew it was offsides, and she had a bunch of Appalachian State midfielders trailing back. But yeah, the player up top there, again, can't tell who exactly that is, but was definitely in an offside position, so if she had Gone after that long ball, it would have been a free kick for the Mountaineers. And we see Brantley trying to win the ball, keep it in alive, and it's going to go out for a Pittsburgh throw. And the rain is starting to line up a little bit, but it's still coming down enough where it could af affect your vision. The ball is slippery. It's going to bounce off the turf and not just roll in smoothly. Yeah. Good effort there by Brantley to try and chase down that ball. Just got there a step too late. And my player, the watch for Amanda West, is coming off as she seems like she needs a break as there's only – Four minutes left. She's been really effective in making the defense work. And she's if she's making the defense work for it's her, that means other opportunities for the strikers behind her. Yeah, and this may be a little bit of a tactical move by head coach Randy Waldrum here. Get his, you know, they've got the lead here late in the half. Get his star player a few extra minutes of rest. Get her a little bit fresher for the second half so that she can really run at that Mountaineer defense and try and find them a second goal. The ball is booted out by number 15 of Chloe Minas to the wing, and that was the attacker that just replaced Amanda West. As now they're going to have another corner with three and a half minutes left to play. And it'll see, you know, it'll be interesting to see does Pitt's plan of attack change a little bit here in the last couple of minutes of this half with West out of the game. Now, the Mountaineers have done a pretty good job of defending her so far in this first half. She's had some good runs, had generated a couple of chances, but has certainly not been dominating the play, you know, the field of play here. So we'll see what Pitt does. Do they still try and play the same way they've been playing, or do they back off a little bit and try and sit on their lead here and get into halftime with that lead? Davidson brings the ball in. It's the near post, and Eagleson falls down, and now... Appalachian State could be in trouble. A bunch of bodies are everywhere. Missed tackle, and now Pittsburgh brings the ball back in. Eagleson goes off her line and just lets the ball go out of bounds. So, once again, Appalachian State struggling on the corner pieces as Pittsburgh is really making Appalachian State 
work and really pay attention to detail when the ball comes in. And it's really been in the near post where Appalachian State has had some issues. Yeah, and when Pitt has had a lot of movement on their set pieces, that's what's given Appalachian State trouble. They've had a few set pieces where there hasn't been as much movement, so it's been a lot easier for the Mountaineers to just, you know, everyone get them, mark somebody and defend that. But, you know, these these runs in the box that Pitt has used on a few of these set pieces have really given the Mountaineers some trouble here. And you see the ball going in again, another cross. Appalachian State really is not playing with width here as we talked about pressing earlier, but if you're going to play this counterattack, you have to have your width available too. So when you want to do that counterattack, you can flip the switch and you can go. And with only playing three at the back the way the Mountaineers are, it can sometimes be more difficult to get the ball out wide when you're playing out of the back and playing against a high press because you just don't have those fullbacks there as outlets. Now you'll see some teams pull their wingers back as almost like wingbacks, and we've seen that a little bit with the Mountaineers here, but it isn't, it isn't predominantly how they've been playing. Appalachian State with the throw in. Number five of Emma McGamby gets swarmed as she's looking around like, hey, no foul, nothing. But the throw in for Appalachian State to number 26 of Haley Boyles as she came in for the freshman, Izzy Woods. Now Appalachian State just boots the ball forward. A little under a minute left in this game. So Pittsburgh will most likely just be conservative, bomb the ball out, hold on to possession, not give anything up. But as I say that, Appalachian State's on the attack here. Quickly met with two Pittsburgh defenders, and that was number 26 of Boyles again. As they do not win the corner, they win a very, very close throw in. So with 50 seconds left, Appalachian State's got a throw in. I'm, gonna, I'm very curious to see what they do here. They're going to do a long throw in. The ball looks like it almost slipped. And looking at how App is setting up now, the last couple of minutes, it looks like maybe they have shifted to four at the back and maybe trying to address some of the problems we've talked about with their width playing the ball out of the back. And Mary Perkins almost had the ball in to her fellow attacker but just did not play it just right. And now Pittsburgh's on the attack. And a great run there from the Pittsburgh attacker. She stayed on her line, making sure that she kept going. If that one-two was going to happen, she could have just laid it off. And now we're into the final five seconds of this match. And a great foot in there by Grigsby to shut down that attack as the clock expires here on the first half. At the half, we have the Pittsburgh Panthers leading the Appalachian State Mountaineers one to nothing. And we will be back after a short break to discuss the first half action. Local businesses, families, and schools play a vital role in our... China ...as the Mountaineers will take the ball and they will head eastward as Pittsburgh will head the west direction. And man, we're telling you, it is coming down here in Boone. But like we said earlier in the broadcast, Appalachian State undefeated at home, so they could probably use this rain to their advantage. Yeah, this Boone weather is something that creates a unique advantage for a lot of Appalachian State teams. You know, we see it play out in other sports. Uh, unique climate, unique weather patterns up here in the high country. So we'll see if that gives the Mountaineers a little bit of a boost here in the second half. It's the first throw in for Appalachian State as it's flicked it on as Appalachian State loses possession as Pittsburgh is now in the final third and now it's brought out to the midfield. And now Pittsburgh is looking to bring the ball to the wing there and it's flags up offside. So the first offsides goes to the Panthers as Appalachian State will take a free kick as Carrie Eagleston. Probably been the best player for Appalachian State, even though she has allowed a goal, but we've already discovered or discussed that, that that was perfectly routine for any team. Yeah, and you know, as we've said a few times, nothing Eagleston could have done about that goal, but she's done a really good job of commanding her, the back line today, keeping them organized and commanding her penalty area and making some important plays on, on, you know, on balls that could have caused trouble for the Mountaineers. Now, Appalachian State is on the chance here as there's three Panthers attacking the lone attacker of Appalachian State. And I believe 
That was Emma McGambany oh, holding the Izzy, ball up. Izzy Wood. Oh, Izzy Wood, with yeah. With a chance, just didn't get the ball out of her feet quick enough there. Took a couple touches too many and allowed the Panthers to recover. Izzy Wood now has the ball again, taking it in, crosses the ball in, but it's quickly dealt with by the Panthers as the play is still continuing here. And it will go out. Nope, it has not gone out yet. No, oh, it will go out for a Panthers goal kick. So quickly we're seeing Appalachia State on the attack and Izzy Wood as she was pulled off in the first half. Now she's brought back on and almost has a goal scoring opportunity. That just shows you what can do in a halftime if Sarah Strickland was telling her attackers to be more aggressive, take them defenders on if it's two or three, just try to make something. Yeah, and a great job by Wood there to get to that ball and get that chance. Just As I said, needed to be a little bit quicker getting it out of her feet, but we've seen that a couple of times in the Mountaineers today. The buildup has been solid at times. It's just they're lacking that, that final touch, that final pass to really get a good scoring chance. As we see Mumu Gisasola, who made a mistake, but E came right back and won the possession back for Appalachian State. As she went to turn, she did not expect the attacker of Pittsburgh to just steal the ball from her with pace as now Appalachian State is working it out of their own half. Izzy Wood is turning the ball and now she's looking for somebody else on the wing. And we got to note that the person who has the ball right now, Tease Carney, did get a yellow card as now we see number 17 of Adelie Palomo who was on the ground shaking up and she's looking like her left knee looks to be where the contact was absorbed as Appalachian State is now attacking down the right wing. And it will go out for a throw-in. I think that it's a throw-in or a corner. It's going to be a throw-in. Yeah, right there on the corner flag. Good job there by the Mountaineers to win that ball there. Appalachian State, Jordan Grigsby will go in for the throw-in. Now, we've seen her on the opposite end of the field where she was throwing the ball into the box. Let's see what their approach will be this time as she's fixing her boot. And it looks like the ball boy is getting a ball that's been sanitized she's drying off her hands now like I said we're in the high country so it is extremely wet when it rains here and it comes down as the cross or the throwing is in not really dealt with almost mistake there for Pittsburgh as they let the ball bounce over her head now they retain possession yeah dangerous bouncing ball there good good throw by Grigsby it's just Mountaineers could not get anybody on the end of it but that's a chance that they'll definitely be happy with here early in the first half, and they'll definitely be happy with how they've played here in the first couple of minutes of the second half. We see Carney and a sub on for Sydney Mara Osco, who are both tussling for the ball here on the Pittsburgh half. As now we're seeing a free kick, a set piece for Appalachian State. And it's number 10, Lauren Murphy over this as Eagleson is out of her box as she's playing the sweeper role once again. And let's see where the ball goes in here. The ball is kicked in, and it goes over near post. Will be a goal kick for Catherine Robinson. An interesting idea there by Murphy um, to go for goal there on that free kick. I would have said it was a little bit too deep um, to take a shot on goal, but with the way the weather is right now, never a bad idea to try and test the keeper. You know, force her to make a save, just couldn't quite get it on target. Robinson booms it to the midfield as an Appalachian State player is immediate there as it's headed back by a Pittsburgh player. Then it's won back by another Appalachian State player. Then it's kicked back out to an Appalachian State player. Now it's Izzy Wood who has lost possession. It's a great tackle from that Pittsburgh defense woman. But Wood has been very active here early in the second half after – uh, ending the first half on the bench has made a couple of good runs already for the Mountaineers. Right, as a freshman, as we mentioned at the top of the program, she's only played 26 minutes after being subbed off. As now we see Pittsburgh is going to win a corner. The first corner of the second half goes to the Pittsburgh Panthers. And fifth corner of the game for Pitt app with only one thus far. As we see number five on the sideline warming up for the – or number nine, excuse me, Amanda West, our player to watch, is looking to come back into the game as the ball is batted in and a header 
was off target but still kept in play by Pittsburgh. And another epic, epic clearance there from Appalachian State defense. As the ball and, is still in play and offsides. And I was surprised to not see Eagleston come off her line there. Although, actually, it looks like they may have given a goal kick. Said the ball went out of play. But I was surprised to see that Eagleston didn't come off of her line on the initial header there as she's done all afternoon. I guess maybe she thought it was going to go out of play. But good hustle, good effort there by the pit attackers to keep that ball in play and try and generate a chance. Now Amanda West is back into the game. We can see if Pittsburgh is going to work down this left side again. As we said before, she was the top goal scorer for Pittsburgh last year and was the number one points of all all time in the history of Pittsburgh Panthers women's soccer as they win another corner. So we rally that up to six corners now for Pittsburgh. And West, as you said, came into this game, someone that we thought had the potential to dominate. She's definitely played well, has gotten the ball into some dangerous areas a few times, but the Mountaineers have done a very good job for the most part of defending her. Now we'll see now that she's been on the bench for a few minutes. She closed the first half on the bench as well, so we'll see. You know, maybe she's got a little bit fresher legs now and can really run at that Mountaineer defense. And it's fourth substitution for Pittsburgh on this short corner, and they're working the ball around to the midfield. Amanda West brings three Appalachian State players to her, and now Appalachian State could be on the counterattack as it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Now it's a two-on-three, but Pittsburgh get the ball back as just not enough pace there from Izzy Wood. And I believe that was Beaver that tried to play her in there, just played it a couple of steps too far in front of her. And once again, another really good recovery by the Pittsburgh back line. Excellent job of hustling back and shutting down that counterattack. We're seeing Adelie Paemo doing throw in now for the Pittsburgh Panthers. The ball is to the midfield now. Two Appalachian State players meet the Pittsburgh player but they are just working around so ever nicely as they just really don't see, they don't really uh, panic in the pressure of the press of Appalachian State. Yeah, Pitt's done a very good job working through that Mountaineer press throughout the game. Um, you know, the press has worked a couple of times for App State, but for the most part, Pitt's done a more than capable job of handling it. That's Anna Bout who brought the play up for Pittsburgh as she fell down looking for a foul, but the play will result in the foul in the Final third for Appalachian State as we see now Pittsburgh is putting the attack on Appalachian State as they win another set-piece opportunity free kick. And a lot like what we saw early in the first half, Appalachian State started out well in the first half and then Pitt settled into the game a little bit more and kind of took control. So, you know, some good end-to-end -end action the last couple of minutes, but we'll see, you know, does Pitt try and – you know, assert themselves into this game as they settle into the second half here. Adelie Palmo again winning another corner as she does a fake step over, causing the Appalachian State defender to clear out the danger. As they do another short corner, as they did last time, as the ball is booted into the penalty spot. There's a head caught to it, but Appalachian State defends the ball, and it will go out, and it will be actually, it will not go out, it will be Amanda West who gets there and keeps the ball in play and throws the ball into the middle, but it's quickly booted out by the Appalachian State defense for a th Pittsburgh throw-in. And overall, good defending once again by the Mountaineers. Just a little bit sloppy on the clearance and unable to get it out of their own end. Palmo again going for the throw-in. She's starting to take a little bit more of the free kick opportunities or really the set-piece opportunities as Haley Davidson is on the right side. So they're Maybe that's a little coaching technique to switch up to set piece, not make it so obvious who's going to be taking it for Pittsburgh here. Yeah, possibly. Or, you know, Waldrum, you know, Coach Waldrum may just have several players that he's comfortable with with those set pieces. And, yeah, as he said, change things up, give the Mountaineers a little bit different look. Appalachian State wins the ball, and they boot it forward, and the possession is lost for App State as Pittsburgh is now passing the ball back to the side. And that was Haley Davidson, who is now moved towards the center back role. As we saw in the first half, she was playing more of a right back role. Yeah, and Dave, I mean, Davidson's been all over the field for Pitt today. So we'll see 
Is this just, you know, where she's playing right now in the run of play as we see West charging now? West making a beautiful run, and it's a great save by Kerry Eagleson. From my angle, it looked like it was going to go in, but Eagleson had to stretch and make her first official save of the second half. It may have been her second. And we said we were waiting on Amanda West to make an impact on this game. Great run right there, cutting through the Mountaineer defense. Great curling shot headed towards the back post. But Eagleston makes a fantastic save to deny Pitt a second goal. And that's why she's on the preseason all-team Sun Belt, Eagleston, at the goalkeeper. As West, again, really just dribbling through the Appalachian State defense. And now she's looking up, and she has a ball in, and it's saved, and it is in the back of the net as Pittsburgh scores off a mishandle of Eagleston. We said that the weather is going to play an effect. We saw the free kick in the Appalachian State end. She tries it and just hoping that the goalkeeper makes a mistake, but I don't think there's really much Eagleson could do there. Another great run by Amanda West to get that ball into the box. I missed who exactly scored the goal, but it was a really good initial save by Eagleston. Kind of a tough shot to catch cleanly. And then Appalachian State just not able to recover and get on the rebound, and Pitt takes advantage, and it's 2-0. I believe on the goal that was Kate McKay, I want to say, if that was on the goal. But once again, Amanda West, a player we said, we have somebody else step up. Now she's back, and she's contributing to her team as Appalachian State kicks off again as they work out the back. Now we've seen the three in the back again. But towards the end of the second, or first half, excuse me, we saw the wording four in the back as Robinson has to come out and clear the ball out quick. And we've seen... You know, Appalachian State, as, he's, as we've said, has been flexible in how they've played defensively. Um, you know, we've seen Seely, excuse me, not Seely, uh, Gisa Sola, well, and Seely kind of rotate between playing centrally, playing out wide, um, playing further up the field, playing further back. So we'll likely see them stick with that three at the back for a lot of the remainder of this game because at this point, the Mountaineers have got to push up and start generating chances if they want to get back into this game. As the ball goes out of play there, kind of a rookie mistake there. As Appalachian State, I guess the defense was not on the same page as she passes the ball right out of bounds for a Pittsburgh throw-in. And that's something that Appalachian State does not need is silly possessions and turnovers like that where Pittsburgh can have the possession of the ball. Yeah, the Mountaineers have definitely got to clean things up here. You know, 31 and a half minutes, there's still a lot of soccer left to be played in this game. But down 2-0, you can't afford um, to be making mistakes like that. And you definitely can't afford to do anything that's going to hand a pit more scoring chances as here comes West once again. On the bottom of your screen, you're also seeing Olivia Cohen go to the sideline. It's looking like she is going to come in, but a pass gone straight there. So Appalachian State gets the ball back in their own half. Eagleston looking to... Pass the ball up to her fellow defense woman. Now she's running, and now the press from Pittsburgh has really disrupted that midfield run and couldn't give it off to out wide to Mumu Gisiasola. I think we're seeing a little bit of fatigue maybe starting to set in for that App State defense. You know, one of the things we said they did really well in the first half was go with those Pittsburgh runs and shut that down. But now we're seeing Pitt start to make some some more progress with some of these longer passes. And, and West has made a couple of very nice individual runs slicing through that defense. Number 17 of Appalachian State, Tess Kearney. You have to be careful on her approach and, and going in to be aggressive on tackle. She is on a yellow. So I was really concerned when she was going in if she was going to overcommit and have a foul and potentially play with... 10 women on the pitch if she gets thrown out for another yellow card. Yeah, and going down a player would be something that would make things really difficult for the Mountaineers, and you definitely don't want to lose someone like Kearney who's wearing that captain's armband, don't want to lose that on-the-field leadership aside from, you know, what she, you know, she's played pretty well today, had that really good chance in the first half, so you definitely don't want to lose, lose her. And about holding the ball up for Pittsburgh as Emma, or Haley Davidson, excuse me, just turns the ball over, and Appalachian State could be on attacking presence here. As we see Woods, or Wood, excuse me, bring the ball up, and that's Kearney again. 
who is now looking to deliver a pass that just goes a little bit straight. So once again, Appalachian State really been a victim of their own chances. They haven't really found that last pass to give them a great opportunity. And the last attacking opportunity for App State was early in the game, or early in the half, excuse me, when Izzy Wood was going three on one. Yeah, and as we've said, you know, there have been moments throughout this game where the build-up play has been solid for Appalachian State. It's just they are lacking that final, that, you know, that clinical element in the final third, whether it's the final pass, the final touch, or just getting the shot on target. It's, you know, they're really going to have to find someone who can step up here in the last not quite 29 minutes. And I've been putting my eye on Palmo now, and or Palmo, excuse me, as Pittsburgh almost have a chance to score, but Eagleson comes off the line. But Paolo has really been pulling the strings for Pittsburgh in the second half. She's been doing all the set pieces. She's been making the right passes. She hasn't really had anything go wrong. And the mention earlier that once the half started, or I believe it was at the end of the first half, she had a major collision where it looked like she hurt her left knee, but I don't think that's stopping her right now. Yeah, and that may have just been a little bit of a stinger there towards the end of the half. And as we're going to have a, looks like a pit player going into the book here. The referee is showing. We're trying to see who it is. The windows are fogging up, and a little bit of that rain is still blocking her view. And I want to say that's Emily Maple, number 10? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what it uh, looked like from our view. She came in a little bit late. Yeah, Emily Maple will be given a yellow card. As she'll be the first Pittsburgh player to be given a yellow in this match. As now the yellow cards are two Appalachian State, one Pittsburgh. Yeah, and these teams have been pretty even with fouls all game long in the first half. App with eight, Pitt with seven. So, you know, both these teams playing kind of physical, and we've seen that with the amount of fouls given away and the amount of bookings. And the ball goes off of Amanda West's leg as she's fixing the string on her boot. As we see, Gisisola ready for the throw in. But number 17, Tess Carney is subbing out for Olivia Cohen. And she'll take a rest as that is her first break of the game. She played all 45 minutes of the first half. And again, this may be about Coach Strickland just trying to get some fresh bodies in there, try and get some, some fresh legs in there that can run at that pit defense because that's what App needs right now. They just need someone who can get on the ball and really try and wear out that Pittsburgh back line. And not a lot of Appalachian State coaches on the touch line barking at the ref saying that was not a foul as they had four or five girls on the ball that could have really turned the tide and potentially turned this game into a 1-2 game. The ball is given away. Now it's headed butt, and now they're appealing for a handball, and they will get it. I, I'm not sure about that call right there. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of tough luck there for Gisa Sola. I, you know, from, I definitely saw the ball hit her hand. It's just one of those situations where how strictly do you call it? You know, Do you say that it is or isn't a handball because of where her arm was. Ref chooses to give it. Um, I don't have any issue with that call because, as I said, you know we could see the ball definitely did hit her arm. Kate McKay is over the free kick. who She was the girl who had the beautiful assist off her set piece in the first half as Pittsburgh is now working the wing. They're threading the needle on the ball here. Appalachian State defense is just a little step slower and let's see what Pittsburgh does here. They're crossing in Appalachian State, kicks it back out, and they just get rid of the ball to clear the danger. A lot of things we've been saying, and I feel like I feel like a broken record saying that Appalachian State getting the ball out, clearing it out for a dangerous situation. Yeah, this Pittsburgh high press has given the Mountaineers problems all game long, and, and they've and the app has really had some trouble playing the ball out of the back, which you know they've been trying to do without a whole lot of success all game long. They've had to resort to using that long ball as here comes Pitt again. As you heard over the intercom, Yapel will come out for Viltry as Pitt and App State tussle on the edge of the App State box. And now App State is in a position and it's squandered because once again, we talked about it in the first half. It seems like Pitt wants this more than Appalachian State does. They're playing a little bit more fierce, a little more pace as the ball goes in. And now we see Amanda West on the edge of the box dribbling and trying to make something for her teammates. As she's still going, and shots on target, and just wide, just barely, a goal for Amanda West on another 
right foot curler as we saw earlier in the second half. Yeah, another good job by West. Excellent shot there, but uh, good goalkeeping by Eagleston as well. Looked like she had that covered had it been on frame. Kerry Eagleston was a little bit late there, so if that ball was a little bit closer in on goal, I feel like that would have been another goal, but it goes out for a goal kick as Eagleston boots it forward and it's headed on to the midfield and it will go out for a Pittsburgh throw-in. And once again, Appalachian State really struggling to maintain possession. It's you know, the last 10, 15 minutes or so, it has been all pit. Lauren Mountaineers Murphy. really on the back foot now. Lauren Murphy called for the foul there as Pitts, as they, once again, App State trying to do the counterattacking football, trying to get the ball back as quick as they can. Sometimes it results in some fouls. As we see, number five of Emma McGibney is on the sideline, looking like she's ready to check in for somebody. And McGibney played up top in the first half, so she, she may be coming in again, again. Trying to just run at that pit defense. And, and the another Pitts, good save by Yeah, Eagleson. another great chance for Pittsburgh. As it looked like it was Paul Ambo who took the shot. But once again, Eagleston adding another save to her category as now she is slowly holding the ball, making sure that her midfielders and her defense can get up. As now it's like danger time. you got 23 minutes left in the game. you got to start sending people forward as a referee calls another foul in the midfield. And it's and on Pittsburgh. I, as I you saw, saw a lot of commotion for Appalachian State bench. Sorry yeah, as you that. saw the, uh, the Pittsburgh players arguing that one a little bit, but you could see the ref clearly motioning. No, it was an elbow, um, which is definitely a foul. And, and sometimes, depending on the severity, can even be a booking. So Appalachian State having a little bit of a set-piece mistake here as now we're seeing Lauren Murphy take over for Jordan Grigsby. And Jordan Grigsby sends the ball into the box and it's quickly met with the heads of Pittsburgh and now it's controlled. And Appalachian State will have a go, but it will go over the box. A little too much. Got a little over the ball there if you're trying to one-time it. Yeah, again, not a bad idea there. I believe that was Wood who took the shot. You know, at this point in the game, Appalachian State, they just want to get the ball towards the net, get the ball on frame, test the goalkeeper. Again, just a little bit too much on it. Got under it just a little bit and could not get that on frame and test the keeper. Mary Perkins comes off and Lauren Murphy is on for Appalachian State. And the referee is going to call it here. I look like that Izzy Wood may have been on there, but I think the referee just let it let it go. And I think he's having a word with Wood saying, calm down. We're not going to run and hit into the back. I'm not going to card you next time. I probably will card you. Yeah, definitely a push in the back there from Wood. Good call by the referee, and as he saw, really no complaint from Wood or any of the other Mountaineers. The ball is going into the Appalachian State defense, and the ball is cleared out. No, it is not. Appalachian State is now caught in their own box, and off the crossbar. Oh, my. What a brilliant strike. Eagleston, I don't know if she tipped it over. Nope, she did not tip it over, so she didn't get a hand on that. What a beautiful strike just just a little bit unlucky sometimes you can do everything right go through your motions but sometimes you have to face the fact that you got to come back and try it again and again sloppy defending right there for the Mountaineers allowing that chance put able to find some space in the box and as you said just a little bit unlucky with the finish there the ball is in the midfield and the Appalachian State trying to recover Amanda West controls the ball and brings it over but a quick intervene by Jordan Grigsby. That would have been danger. Amanda West on the left flank going at your goalkeeping with nobody around. That is scary. Yeah, and a good job by Grigsby. Had to be quick to that ball because, as you said, West could have been in there if Grigsby didn't get to that ball first. Appalachian State on the counter. Once again, a sloppy pass does not get them any ball advance. But it will go out for a throw in. As Gisia Sola will now throw it in to the right flank of Appalachian State as a quick Meg. Great skill there. I don't know if she intended to do that. Now Appalachian State's got numbers. At the edge of the box, Appalachian State is quickly shut down by Pittsburgh as they pull up a body in front of the ball. Great control there by Leah Paez. And now Amanda West is on. It's 
She's met by Gay Sisoa. Now she's on her left foot, cuts into the right, and she's going to have a go. And it's the third goal for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Eagleston just slowed it down in her left hand. Didn't have to put a lot of pace. More about just precision on that. And Amanda West has scored for Pittsburgh. First goal of the year. And the theme of this game continues. Mountaineers in the attack. Just, again, lacking that final pass, that final touch. And then a brilliantly run counterattack there by Pitt. And Mountaineers really had no chance once West was running at that back line. She had a full head of steam. Great finish. Once again, not much Eagleston could have done. Just a brilliant run and brilliant finish by West. Appalachian State look to put up some points here now, trying to get a goal or two, trying to make a comeback. as It is 3 nothing with 19 and a half minutes left in the second half as the ball goes out for a Appalachian State throw-in. Gissia Solo throws the ball into number five of Ebba. McGabany as she is tussling for the ball and now she loses possession and Pittsburgh are back in midfield and now they are just stringing passes together. This looks really great. Great ball. Eagleson has to come out and she will come up with it. And that's been the thing about Pittsburgh. They're stringing these one to two, three together one-time passes and it kind of catch App State off guard and it's like, oh, okay, we got we to gotta close down and we got to get this ball out of the danger zone. Yeah, And we said few minutes ago it looked like maybe this App State defense was starting to run out of gas and we are really seeing that now I mean Pitt is just absolutely in control right now App had a positive start to the second half but you know since the first five minutes or so it has been all Pitt they are really dominating this game right now Amanda West on the ball again as she takes the defender one on one she's in the box let's see what happens she's beating them again and it's a great save I couldn't tell if that was deflected off the sliding defender or Eagleston but once again, Amanda West is starting to show that she is a top goal threat, and you need to take her seriously if she's on or she's attacking in your defense. As now we see number 20, Anila Allen, coming in for and the a, Pittsburgh Panthers. Another just excellent run by West. I believe that was a defender. Can't tell who exactly it was, but it was the App State defender who is now still down, so to get up. But a great sliding challenge there right, at, right there at the end to knock that ball out for a corner. And Nina Allen coming into the game. We saw Anna Bout make way as the Appalachian State defender is still on the ground. She needs to get up now. I believe that is Mumu Gisiasola. I think it might have been a cramp as we see number 17, a Tess Kearney, who's on a yellow, coming back in. And now we see Mumu as she walks around the outside of the pitch. And I believe on the corner for Pittsburgh is Haley Davidson. It may also just be a little bit of turf burn there for Kisa Sola. You know, this is a, a turf field, and that can be painful sometimes with a hard slide like that. So she'll go receive a little bit of treatment from the trainer, but looks to be okay. The cross is in. It hits the face of the defender. Now Pittsburgh can control it as they work it back to that left wing. I think they're going to keep going to that left wing because Amanda West – it's just that much of a threat. She's having success here in the second half as we see Haley Davidson run back to the right back position. And now she is making way for number 13, which I believe that is Eva Frankovich. And Pitt really starting to utilize their depth now, getting some fresh legs in there. We see number 15, Chloe Minas, who has been really effective in this second half. We didn't talk about her a lot, but she was one of the pivotal points of getting Amanda West's third or second goal, excuse me. Yeah, Minas, one of, uh, you know, one of the unsung heroes of this game. You know, those midfield players that do a lot of the, the dirty work but don't necessarily show up in the box score, uh, you know, don't always get recognized because we're not saying their name very often since they're not on the ball much, but – Minas has been excellent in this game on both ends of the field. Pittsburgh is just dominating possession of the ball right here as we see them working down the right flank, and the flag is up offsides for the Pittsburgh Panthers. We'll see Eagleston step up and take a free kick, or goal kick, excuse me. And with just over 16 and a half minutes left, 
it, it's now or never for Appalachian State. If they want any chance of getting back into this game, they've got to get a goal here in the next couple of minutes. But, you know, last 20, 20 minutes or so really have not looked very threatening in Pitt's half of the field, really haven't even had much possession on that end of the field. Yeah, Pitt's been all control, and I want to take a little point and talk about why this has been a really dominant second half for Pittsburgh as they are now working into the De Appalachian State defense. The ball is in the near post. She slots it home, and nobody's there. And Appalachian State clears it out, hits the shoulder, and he will call handball, and it will be a free kick for Appalachian State. But a thing I've picked up on watching the second half is when Pittsburgh has the ball in the midfield, they're immediately flicking away from opposition pressure, looking up and playing a simple pass. And sometimes you can just do the simple things, and it just brings a great effect for the team. Yeah, Pitt's done a great job of just kind of knocking the ball around here in the second half. You know, they're playing a lot of really good passes, and, and Appalachian State's tried to do the same. They just have not had any success breaking through that Pittsburgh pressure. And... You know, and as we've seen here in the second half, this Appalachian State team start, fatigue starting to set in. They're not able to pressure the way they were earlier in the game, which is opening things up a little bit more for Pitt. Appalachian State has two substitutes on the touchline waiting to come in as they are kicking the ball around in their own half. And it looks like we're going to see Marley Perkins come in and Caitlin Little on the next dead ball. As Amanda West gets away from her defender, now she's tagging in the inside. There's a three on three. Now it's a four as the cross comes in. Amanda West, kind of a selfish chance there. Had opportunities to pass the ball up, but instead goes for a shot and another save for Eagleston. Yeah, and another great run by West. Got herself half yard of space there. Gave herself an opening to shoot just, you know, and got a decent amount of pace on the shot. Just wasn't able to get any direction on it and it's right at Eagleston. Appalachian State bombs the ball to the center circle. It's a foul called as the newly substituted Nyla Allen is called for the foul. Appalachian State takes it quickly. And they're letting the ball just roll here. The ball is booted into the box. Nobody there to meet it. Once again, it could be heavy legs, fatigued legs, where you can't make those extra sprints that you could in the first half. Yeah, it's definitely been difficult for App State, and especially, you know, they haven't had much of the ball here in the second half, and you're always going to be exerting more energy when you're defending than when you're attacking, and it and it really can be that simple. You know, they've been on the back foot for most of the second half, and, and that can't be helping. As looks like Pitt's going to make a goal, is going to make a change at goalkeeper here. Catherine Robinson is going to come off for Caitlin Lazzarini in the goalkeeping position. I don't know if she's picked up an injury or Pitt is just trying to preserve. It looks like she's kind of – oh, no, she's okay. She gets it old, but it looked like her face was wrenching there a little bit. But Maybe I guess if you're up 3-0, 13 left, I don't see why not. You know, and this is a, a non-conference game for Pitt. So, obviously, they want to win. They want to play well. But it's also one of those games where, yeah, they're up 3-0 with less than 15 minutes left. You know, Coach Waldron can get some of his depth players in there, see what he's – see what he's got outside of his starting 11. You know, have some depth players that he can use once ACC play gets started up. Appalachian State defender cannot close down the ball quick enough. It's going to be a Pittsburgh corner. I don't think Appalachian State has had a corner the whole time in the second half. Have you seen I one? don't think they have because, you know, as we keep saying, and again, probably sound like a broken record at this point, but they just have not had the ball. And especially down... Um, in the Pittsburgh half of the field, it's you know they've been doing all they can to get the ball out of their own end. The cross into the center circle, nobody's there to deal with it, and it's sworn by Pittsburgh players as they played out to the midfield. Appalachian State a little slow to get back as the ball is now batted up to the midfield. Now cross back into the Appalachian State defense, and now it has led to an easy goal scoring opportunity. There's a collision, but it's going to be a goal. Eagleson collides with the substitute. Nita Allen as she scores a goal, and now it is four to nothing. Appalachian State. Just when you thought there wouldn't be anything like that, I thought the play would be dead. An easy flick on, and Allen's got a goal. And again, slo uh, more sloppy play in the midfield from Appalachian State. The ball is just kind of bouncing around. Pittsburgh gets a touch to it, and even if that ball had not gone in because of the collision between Eagleston and the attacker, Eagleston get didn't get the ball. 
So even if the ball hadn't gone in, likely would have been a penalty anyway. Referees are on the opposite side of the field, on the right flank for Pittsburgh, discussing about what is going to happen here. Maybe if Eagleston could be in trouble for the collision. As she has been playing a sweeper keeper today, as we mentioned, as she's been coming out of the box, she's been fully committed once again. She didn't have commit. She fully committed, and that leads an opportunity for her to get yellow card, red card, or a PK opportunity. As they the referees are just going Could have also potentially been discussing offside, but goal is going to be given. And no Appalachian made. State kick off, and they are down 0-4. to four. And for the first, really, 50 minutes of this game, Appalachian State played pretty well. They gave Pittsburgh a good run for their money. It's just, you know, Pittsburgh has really – asserted their dominance here in the second half, and they have played exceptionally well here in the second half and really controlled this game. As the rain continues to fall here just ever so slightly, it'll be interesting to see what the tweaks will be to the lineup for both teams coming into the second game that we played this Sunday as Pittsburgh is moving the ball up quickly, and it's been dealt with by Appalachian State as they lose possession again. But now it just looks like they're playing – just a little ping-pong ball here, just back and forth action, heading out dangerous to the midfield. And I think if you're Appalachian State, there are positives that you can take out of this game as we close in on 11 minutes to go here. You know, the, the defense, even though they've conceded four goals, has had some good moments. You know, in the first half especially, they were, they were very organized, did a very good job limiting Pitt's chances. It's just they're going to have to address the attack because even in the first half they weren't generating a whole lot of chances so they're you know as we've said losing your top goal scorer losing your leader in assists they're gonna have to find somebody that can step up and provide that extra edge in attack I think you can see what both teams is that next game I don't think they're gonna either team is gonna run three in the back as Appalachian State here is putting together attack and it's still won here by Wood as Wood plays it down to yeah Carey. looking around the field Pretty, it looks like pretty much all bench in for Pitt. App still with a lot of their starters in, so you know they may get a little bit of possession here uh, towards the end of this game. See, Woods, looks like the Pittsburgh players are appealing for a push on Woods, but it does not matter because Pittsburgh will get a goal kick. And as we mentioned earlier, this, is, this whole second half, it seems like it's just been all Pittsburgh in control. Yeah, first five minutes, Appalachian State played really well. Wood almost got in for a chance and an equalizer. But after that, Pitt settled back into the game, got some good chances, and then once they got that second goal, it was all downhill the rest of the way for the Mountaineers. As Lanzarini bombs the ball to the middle, and it's met by different heads of both teams here, Pitt ends up winning it as they get the ball right away. And it looks like Appalachian State just lost the ball under her own feet, and now... They're on the attack, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh going down the right flank. Another great pass, lead pass, if you will. And they're still up in an attack. Still holding possession. Goes out, and it's going to be a Pittsburgh throw-in. And Pitt, despite most of their bench being in the game, still playing well here, still giving the Mountaineers a lot of problems. High ball into the air near post, and it will just go out as Eagleston will not deal with it. And it's going to be a goal kick. Number 26 of Haley Boyles will come in for Izzy Wood. As Izzy Wood, we just mentioned, was the only clear threat for Appalachia State in the second half, taking the 3-1 defender and the ball just going out of bounds on a weak shot. And I'm a little bit surprised we didn't see more of Boyles earlier in the second half because, you know, she came in in the first half and it kind of looked like her instructions from Coach Strickland were just run at the defense, try and make life difficult for Pittsburgh, and she did that pretty well. Um, so I was a little bit interested to uh, – so I was a little bit surprised that we did not see her more earlier in the game when the Mountaineers maybe had a better chance of climbing back into it. Appalachian State wins a throw in here. They're going to play it down the right side, and the ball is out of bounds with the flagman saying Pittsburgh's ball. So another Pittsburgh throw in. In their own half here, maybe Appalachian State could get a morale goal here if they could sneak in one just so they can end on a high note after having a second half that I plan that Sarah Strickland did not plan for. Yeah, it has been a disastrous second half of the Mountaineers. 
couldn't have gone any better for Pitt. But, yeah, App at this point, just play hard for the next seven minutes, 40 seconds. Try and find some more positives that you can take out of this game. And, you know, these two teams are going to go at each other again on Sunday. Try and find some things that you can use to your tactical advantage on Sunday. And Boyles was in for Appalachian State, but just a too much weight on that pass quickly for Lanzini or Lanzarini, excuse me, to come off her line. Appalachian State wins another throw in in their own half. As we're seeing a substitution for Appalachian State as Megan Gregg will come in for Lauren Murphy. So Appalachian State making a little substitutions. Save their best for the next game. For Sunday's game against Pittsburgh in the same location. Maybe, maybe there's going to be a different approach because I would assume that this match performance in the second half will not be good enough for Sarah Strickland's yeah, and again, team. You know, it's a non-conference game, so a little bit lower stakes than, than a conference game for both of these teams. So it wouldn't surprise me if on Sunday we see both of these teams change their tactics around a little bit, you know, especially for Appalachian State. Try and just find something else that can work because, you know, they had some bright moments today, but for the most part, you know, just they – they have not been particularly good on the attacking side of things today. So it wouldn't surprise me if Coach Strickland tries to change things up and try and get a little bit more energy and a little bit more creativity into that attack. As Appalachian State deals with the ball in the danger zone, and they clear it out. And I see a lot of motioning coming from the Appalachian State bench as different coaches and assistant coaches are telling players to make different runs and fill the gaps where they could advance the ball, which is something we haven't seen come at all for Pittsburgh's coaching team that I've seen. Have you noticed anything about that yet? I really haven't, yeah. Coach Waldrum's been pretty stoic there on the, the sideline. You know, obviously been communicating with his players a little bit, but hasn't been particularly animated. But, you know, especially in the second half, he hasn't had to be because, you know, Pittsburgh has played very well here in the second half. They've been on the front foot really for most of the second half and for most of the game as well. So As they you know, win have another gone, corner. Yeah, things have gone pretty well to plan for the Panthers. Appalachian State will bring in Mumu Gisiasola, who came off after the sliding deflection that she had earlier in the game near post where we saw her come up limping. And we see another substitution as Hannah Crinch will come in for the P Pirates. Oh, excuse me, Panthers, Panthers. Appalachian State deals with the corner. They get it out. And now another cross in for Pittsburgh. It's dealt with, and it's met poorly on the touch. So Eagleson has no, no sweat about that one as she'll have another goal kick. And we're running down to four minutes here left as Pittsburgh is leading Appalachian State four to nothing. And a little bit better there defensively on the corner from Appalachian State. Did a good job of dealing with the initial ball. Pitt was able to win possession back, but uh, good defending. A little bit of a chance there for Pitt, but nothing nothing that ended up being too dangerous. Pittsburgh wins a throw in in the mid center or mid center of the field as they're just really right now just trying to maintain possession, maybe get another goal. I mean you kinda got four, but sometimes if you're a player on the bench and you don't get a lot of time and you can string some pass it together and get a goal, I'm surely you're going to take it as they are now running the ball into the Appalachian State near post, and it's met with a hard challenge. All ball there from Jordan Grigsby. Yeah, good challenge there by Gris Grigsby. Certainly a very physical challenge, but uh, from our angle, it looked like she went in cleanly, won the ball. And as you said, yeah, these, these pit depth players are getting a chance to play now. They're going to be hungry. They're going to want to run at this Appalachian State defense because – you know, once they start ACC play, they're going to be playing against some of the best teams in the country like North Carolina, NC State, Florida State, uh, Virginia. So you don't really know, you know, how many opportunities they're going to get against teams like that. So they want to make the most of the chances that they're getting now against the Mountaineers. You saw Rebecca Bartosh, who was offsides. She had a brilliant control there, but like we said, in an offsides position. Appalachian State here now running into the Pittsburgh defense and they're just going to keep it in the middle here. They're going to exchange passes. And once again, a questionable hit there from Jordan Grisby as she just 
booted the ball a little too hard, and it goes right up for the hands of Lazzarini. Yeah, she was trying to get the ball up to Boyles, but I'm not sure Boyles expected it and expected, you know, knew to be making that run, and then Grigsby just overhit the pass a little bit. And that's really been the story of the game for the Mountaineers. Appalachian State really has only themselves to blame as just not putting the simple passes together and not giving the perfect pass that you need to lead into a potential goal-scoring opportunity as Pittsburgh was another throw-in. But by, you know, on the flip side of that, we also have to say full credit to Pitt. You know, they have executed their tactics very well, played very compact in the midfield and made things made life difficult for the Mountaineers and then once things starting to open up in the attack in the second half, they took advantage of their chances. Uh, you know, they were clinical. They made the plays that they needed to, and, and that's really been the difference. Appalachian State did draw an offsides there as they had a free kick opportunity. Now they're working into the box almost of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh regains possession as it goes. A two-on-one will be a Pittsburgh throw-in. And we got a minute 30 left here on the clock and it's going to be a pretty easy victory for Pittsburgh as they just cruise around the second half it was all them like we said earlier if Izzy Wood potentially scores the game tying goal maybe we have a different outcome but right now Pittsburgh they're going to walk away happy that they got this win and get ready for the game on Sunday yeah coach Waldrum definitely going to be very happy with this performance um, you know as we said this is a Pittsburgh team that Looks to be on the upswing in the ACC. A young team that has played really, really well today. And they'll certainly be very happy with this result as they move through their non-conference schedule and get ready for ACC play later in the year. As Pittsburgh is now just passing the ball, controlling it in their own half. Appalachian State, as we see Guiniasola, Guiniasola, excuse me, come up and quickly break up the possession. And looks like the referee's going to have a talk to her. Maybe pull out a yellow. He's having a word, and nothing happens. It looked like more of a lack of concentration, just frustration on the day. If you're losing 4 nothing and they're playing possession ball, you might want to try to get a foul, and I wouldn't recommend and, doing that, but and I think just at this, frustration. And I think at this point, the official doesn't want to have to give a booking if he doesn't have to this late in the game. You know, He can officiate this game effectively just by speaking to Gisa Sola and saying, hey, just because it's the last minute of a blowout game doesn't mean he can do that. And we see the last five seconds as the first game between Appalachian State and Pittsburgh results in a 4-0 win for Pittsburgh. Like we said, all second half Pittsburgh, Appalachian State, not really here for the second half. Of yeah, dominant match. performance by the Panthers. As we said, there are positives that Appalachian State can